This is what I used to do back in the day. We used to take stock cams and we would weld onto the end of them and uh, leave them things open for a right long time. Yeah, I think it's fat. We began the last video with the intention of building a Briggs and Stratton engine only to find out that the Briggs we had chosen was already built. So we then decided, let's try to build a Briggs and Stratton engine ourselves that will outperform the already built engine. Ike has an old school stiff chassis mini bike that is begging for a five horsepower Briggs engine. So we're going to build this engine and then stick it on that mini bike, probably restore the bike too. So. We bought a bunch of Briggs and Stratton goodies from a buddy of ours, and uh, we're gonna see if we can put together a pretty mean Briggs and Stratton five horsepower flathead. So on this five horse Briggs, we are gonna pull out some tricks that I learned way back in the day. We are gonna port and polish the engine. We are gonna grind out some of the little ramps here on these uh, eyebrows to allow the fuel and air and all that stuff to flow uh, freely. Uh, we also have some goodies in the box. We have a billet rod, we have a camshaft, and we have a three and a half horse flywheel we're gonna throw on this thing. That's right. All right, dude, first things first, let's pop out this piston. Yeah, because it seems like every single Briggs we get our hands on, yeah. they are worn out. Yeah. So we're gonna pop out the piston. We bought this just like this, already disassembled. It's definitely been run. Uh, one thing I did notice is that they're pretty much lined up. Oh, that's not what you want. No, you can't have that. You gotta have these turned away from each other. This is gonna be a factory Briggs piston. Yeah, and this is also a 10 over. Let's see how it fits. Tight. Tight. That's definitely too tight, dude. What? So we can just save this for a later date. I would like to put the uh, billet rod on it though. What we can do is we can pinch these rings together and check out the ring gap. And so a worn out piston ring is gonna have bigger than normal ring gap? Yep. Okay. So pretty much in the center of the screen, you see a tiny little gap. That does look pretty tight. Yeah. It has two compression rings. One oil ring and two compression rings. Doesn't look quite as tight as the other one. It's not as quite as tight as the oil ring. Oh, that one's real tight. Look at that one. That one's pretty tight. I'm, I'm saying this is pretty tight. In fine shape. Good. But I gotta remove it. Yeah, you gotta Just remove it because we gotta put a rod in it. It's all good, dude. Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so Ike took the block to his work this morning and he put it in parts cleaner, cleaned it up nice, and also honed the cylinder. So we should have a pretty fresh starting point for this build here. That's right. So uh, I guess the first thing we need to do, this is going to be the engine we're going to build, right? Yeah, that's correct. Kind of the old school way? That's correct. All right, first thing we got to do is we got to take the valves out and we're going to port and polish and open things up. Sounds good. Yeah. So I have really limited experience with Briggs Flathead. The first, the only time I've ever really worked on one was like before we even made YouTube videos when we were messing with go-karts. So I'm excited to do this build just because of the different uh, valve design. So first things first, to get these valves off, we have to take this cover off. This is all on Ike's instruction because I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, oh, we got valve springs. That's kind of cool. Sweet. There's the retainer, got the valve spring in there, and there's the valve. So while the valve trains out, we're gonna go ahead and port and polish the intake and exhaust runners here. We're also gonna check our stash to see if we have some stiffer springs. It looks like a screaming face, honestly, dude. Look at it. For that? Yep. That's because I'm taking out his eyeball. It's just for everyone like who wants to do head yeah. work or do not yeah. touch the surface that the valve face is contacts. Hit. Yeah. 
because um, if you do, uh, you, you may compromise the seal and it'll cause the valve to eventually burn. So our porting and polishing of the intake and exhaust runners is done. That exhaust feels good. This always takes us a long time because it's really just not a process you can rush. Um, the exhaust has been opened up and polished. We, uh, we wrapped scotch pad around our um, sandpaper wheel here and it actually did a really, really good job smoothing out uh, the exhaust port here. So all that's left to do on the block here is to grind on these little eyebrows for even better flow. That's all I'm gonna do there. So we dug through our stash and we did not have some heavier duty valve springs for a Briggs & Stratton engine. So we rummaged and we found some stock Predator 212 valve springs. And they're a little bit shorter, but they're a lot stiffer. So we installed Predator 212 valve springs into this Briggs & Stratton five horsepower engine. Don't hate on us. Hopefully we didn't mess up. Hopefully uh, the Predator valve springs are a lot like uh, heavier valve springs for the cam that we're putting in this thing. They felt heavier. They felt heavier. Uh, they are heavier by the seat of my pants. Yes. They're great. They're the same exact diameter as the factory Briggs and Stratton uh, valve springs. Um, we are ready to uh, install the, install rod and the piston. piston rod and then the crankshaft. Let's do it. All right. So we just got through tightening down the connecting rod down to spec, and now we're going to move on to cam the shaft. Cam. Yes. So we have several cams here to pick from, and we just need a pick. I think I already know which one I'm going to go with. We have... What? Oops. Valve we have springs. some valve springs here with this dyno cam. We should probably use those springs, we, dude. It's probably matched with the cam, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess we should have checked <laughs> in the box, but it came with some uh, valve springs, and we're going to yeah, use, gonna use what it springs. came with. Yeah. So uh, we have a dyno cam here. Uh, this is a grind number 07-3, uh, recommended class, stock junior. So the lift is 0.232.5, same thing with the exhaust. This is a stock cam. Oh yeah, we can look Let's at this. Let's see the... if uh, you can see much difference. You can see there's a little bit of difference in the lift. The one on the left is the performance cam. The one on the right is a stock cam. This is what I used to do back in the day. We used to take stock cams and we would weld onto the end of them and uh, leave them things open for a right long time. Yeah, I think it's fat. Yeah, it's really It's a fat. lot of duration, dude. Yeah. A lot of lift, too. Yeah. So we are about to install this camshaft. Putting some... Uh, Just a little bit of assembly lube. A little bit of assembly lube on it. I'm not sure if the valve springs that were in with this cam were stock or not. They seem kind of stock because they felt like the exact same pressure as the stock ones. So we kept the Predator springs in it. For testing purposes. Exactly, for testing purposes. Bam. Lifters. Lifters. And, and here cam. we got the camshaft. Like that. Dude, it's going together, man. Yeah, we're getting close. You know what? what's next? Uh, side cover? Side cover. Yes, sir. There we go. In order to use a three and a half horse flywheel on a five horse Briggs, you need an adapter plate kind of like that to get the coil closer to the flywheel since your coil is just, or your flywheel is just a lot smaller in general. So we have a copper head gasket so if you remember, that's an aftermarket head for Briggs 5 horse with some subtle but key differences uh, over a stock head. The uh, fins are taller. The uh, spark plug goes in at an angle rather than straight up and down. Here we have a slope there. Yep. 
Way different design. Yep. And uh, all in the name of performance. It's been shaved, smaller combustion chamber overall. Just better design for flow and performance. Of course. These uh, head bolts should be torqued down to a specific torque, but we don't have the specs on this head. So I'm just uh, kind of going by the seat of my pants, which has worked for me a lot. Now it's gonna be really important that we use a really shallow spark plug because, well, the motor's a top dead center and you can actually see just how close the piston is to the head. So I just installed a header on our engine, one that Ike had laying around from one of his other 18 Briggs and Stratton five horsepower engines. And since these old Briggs engines are so prone to carburetor problems, we're just gonna skip it and stick a 22 millimeter Makuni carburetor from gopowersports.com. The 22 millimeter Makuni is one of our personal favorites for small engines and stuff like this. Uh, it's not good for a stock engine, but for like a stage two, 212, it's great. Maybe even a stage one, 212, it'll help you out. Uh, it's a great step up from a stock carburetor. You can find this carburetor at our link in the description available from gopowersports.com and use our discount code CC10 for 10% off most products on their website to get an even better deal on parts and help support us as well. So unfortunately the intake manifold that ships with the kit is for a Predator 212 or Honda clone. Uh, in this it doesn't work on a Briggs and Stratton so Ike is making a custom intake manifold. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. What you doing, John? Oh, I'm just welding up the intake manifold. Cover. Think the wood's getting hot? Yeah. It smells like campfire. So we had to put a new pull cord on it, but everything's ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna be the gas tank for testing purposes, just cause, I mean, we'll figure out a permanent gas tank whenever we go to mount this on something, but for now, I'm just gonna hold it. I got shocked, that's what that was about. All right. So we cobbled together this old Briggs today. I think it turned out pretty well. Not bad. Yeah, it's really the first time we've just threw together an engine with used parts. All used parts. The only thing that's not really used is the Makuni carburetor. Is the Makuni carburetor from yeah. Go Power Sport. That's right. And they'll probably sell you a uh, uh, an intake for a Briggs five horsepower. We just didn't have one. Yeah. So check their website for that too. Yeah. But we need something old and vintage, to, and vintage to put this on, and Ike has just the thing. Yes, I do. Six, eight months ago, he actually bought an old mini bike, like one, one of the ones that are really popular right now, from a fan. Um, so we're gonna restore that mini bike. We might dress up this engine a little bit, and that should be like a nice, like period correct, old school mini bike. Sounds good. So. Um, and maybe we can put it up against one of the other mini bikes. With a predator. With a predator on it. Yeah, because I'd, I'd really like to know how a modified, that's hot, <laughs> modified Briggs does up against a, uh, like a new style uh, predator, modified yep. predator. Because there there's still people out there who say that an old flathead Briggs will make more power than a overhead valve predator Honda clone. So today we took a box of parts and we made a running engine, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, but... I mean, we'll see. We don't know. We just we ran it for like 30 seconds or two minutes today. We're, we're going to stick it on an old school mini bike in another video uh, and see how it performs. But thanks for watching this video, guys. Check out what we're up to in between videos at Cars and Cameras Reviews on Facebook and Instagram. Of course, to get yourself a better deal on go-kart mini bike parts, use our discount code CC10 at gopowersports.com. Help support us in what we do by picking up a hoodie, sticker, or t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching. Let us know, are you still running a Briggs & Stratton engine?
or have you gone clone like everybody else? Or or Tecumseh. Or Tecumseh. Yeah, of or course. Tecumseh can't, or whatever. Can't, you, can't leave out the third one. However you uh, <laughs> yeah. pronounce it. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video today, guys. See you next time.